If your dream is to be the very best, like no one ever was, you have one major goal – to overcome the powerful Pokémon trainers, most often referred to as Gym Leaders. Gym Leaders are supposed to be paragons of what a Pokémon trainer can be, and their personalities are as varied and distinct as the monsters they bring into battle. But are they all good? And if not, which ones are downright evil? Each Pokémon game features a different region with its own unique lineup of Gym Leaders, and today we'll be looking at the cast of characters that call the Kanto region home. And for the purposes of this list, we're going to consider the Elite Four and Champion Trainers. I'm Brad with Wicked Binge. Stock up on Pokeballs and Potions because this is Gen 1 Pokemon Gym Leaders. Good to Evil. As is typical with these lists, we'll be dividing the gym leaders into three categories, starting with the most altruistic and working our way down towards the most dastardly. These are the good. Our gold medal of good has to go to the Elite Four trainer who wields Dragon-type Pokémon, Lance. This cool character, who calls the Indigo Plateau home, has a humongous fan following due to his incredible skill as a trainer and his kind nature. The only thing Lance prioritizes more than stylish caps is treating his partner Pokémon with compassion and respect. He's always in a dashing cape and is known far and wide to be a trainer that stands for justice. In the Pokémon anime, Lance is a member of a team of special agents called the Pokémon G-Men and uses his position to keep the entire world safe from external threats. He also lent a hand against Team Rocket on more than one occasion, saving the day time and time again with this trusty Dragonite. Second on our list of good gym leaders is the grass-type specialist, Erica. She would have gotten gold, but her short temper with those who dislike her perfume scents left her just short. This kimono-wearing gardener from Celadon City maintains a serene disposition almost all the time, and is well-liked for her calm and comforting presence to humans and Pokémon alike. She's known to doze off from time to time, but whether that's due to her calmness or her penchant for Pokémon who give off sleep-inducing spores is anybody's guess. When you defeat her, Erica maintains her graceful calm, thanking the protagonist for inspiring her to greater feats in the future, and gifting you with TM21 Mega Drain. In the anime, Erica loves teaching the art of raising Pokémon and making perfume. The bronze medal of good goes to Misty, the skilled swimmer and water-type gym leader of Cerulean City. Constantly looking for new strategies to increase her abilities in Pokémon battles, Misty is a dedicated and driven trainer who hopes to one day hold a spot of honor on the Elite Four, like her idol, Lorelei, who we'll talk about later in this video. In the games, Misty is known for an all-out aggressive assault using water types. When you take her down, she rewards you with TM11, Bubble Beam. In the anime, Misty is one of the most iconic gym leaders, being one of Ash Ketchum's traveling companions in the earliest seasons. In the show, Misty is initially a bratty, whiny traveling companion, but over the course of the series, she undergoes a lot of personal growth, eventually taking over the Cerulean Gym and inhabiting a persona much like the one seen in the games. Misty has displayed a willingness to go above and beyond for her friends, be they human or Pokémon, time and time again. The only thing stopping her from placing higher on the list is her horrible temper and tendency to resort to physical violence when someone annoys her. Rounding out the good section, we have Brock from Pewter City. This rock-type gym leader is known for his no-nonsense approach and his desire to show everyone the crushing power of his favorite Pokémon type. He's fond of excavating fossils from Mount Moon in his free time and is well regarded as one of the only seriously competitive trainers in the Pewter City area. His stern demeanor makes him strike an intimidating figure, but his laughter can be uncontrollable when his serious facade breaks down. When you beat him in battle, Brock gives you TM34 Bide. In the anime, Brock is Ash's traveling companion along with Misty, and makes several reappearances throughout the series. He's older than the other main characters and, as such, often ends up in a supportive mentor role. That said, we can't mention anime Brock without mentioning his most obvious character trait, being a womanizer, or at least thinking he is. While mostly harmless, it's undeniable that Brock oversteps boundaries with almost every female character he meets. But at the end of the day, this gym leader's intentions are good. With that said, this wraps up the good characters. We're now entering more neutral territory. This is the gray area. 
We'll begin our descent into the gray with Lorelei, an ice-type trainer and member of the Elite Four. Her cool and collected demeanor and severe logical style of battling have earned her a harsh reputation as a cruel opponent. However, Lorelei does have a strong sense of justice and can be witnessed multiple times helping to thwart Team Rocket's evil plots. Contrary to what her demeanor might make you think, Lorelei has a gigantic collection of Polka Dolls, Pokemon plushies, that she stores in her home home on Four Island. In the anime, Lorelei is known as Prima, and while her basic character traits from the game remain, she's given much more depth that earns her this spot on the list. Her philosophy is to flow like water, but be hard as ice in battle. She constantly dodges paparazzi and adoring fans to pursue her true passion, educating young trainers in how to properly battle. Next up is the burly brawler of the Elite Four, Bruno. This fighting type trainer is heralded for his physical strength and in turn, raw powers what he values most in his Pokemon partners. His entire existence revolves around improving power, whether that be enhancing mental fortitude with meditation, physical strength with training, or recovering with much needed trips to the spa on one island for his Pokemon and himself. In the anime, Bruno is presented as a stoic, hardworking man, but is quickly revealed to be rather lazy in reality. In spite of this, his power is not to be underestimated. He himself admits that his battle strategy simply revolves around catching and training the strongest possible Pokemon he can, without regard to much else, though he does learn to value the bond between a trainer and their Pokemon over time. Sabrina is right at home in the middle of our list. This psychic-type gym leader from Saffron City is enigmatic and distant. She develops psychic powers of her own at an early age, discovered when she accidentally bent a spoon with her mind. These abilities have left her somewhat disconnected from her peers, and as a result, Sabrina has a closed-off personality. An extremely calculating person, it's said that Sabrina used her psychic abilities to force the closure of the other gym located in Saffron City, turning it into the fighting dojo, so her dominion over Saffron could be uncontested. When you beat her in the game, Sabrina gives you the powerful psychic move, TM46 Psywave. Now in the anime, Sabrina is a much darker character. Her lust for power and more control over her psychic abilities caused her psyche to fracture, creating two distinct personalities, the cold, emotionless gym leader who desires victory at all cost, and a spectral little girl that just wants to have fun. However, a chance meeting with a haunter and his funny antics caused Sabrina to laugh for the first time in years, reuniting her disparate personalities and returning her to a more neutral personality. Blaine, the fire-type gym leader of Cinnabar Island, is next on our list. He's known as the hot-headed Quizmaster, and his Pokémon are known to be unusually rough in their approach to battle. He's always seen wearing a pair of dark sunglasses and only removes them when he's thinking up new trivia questions. In the anime, Blaine is known to use a constant barrage of jokes, riddles, and puns, even in situations where it seems inappropriate or rude. He's also known to take advantage of the intense heat of his volcano-based gym to wear out the trainers he faces before their Pokémon even enter the battlefield. In spite of his less favorable character traits, Blaine still has it in him to be heroic, standing up to Team Rocket to foil their attack on the Pokémon Lab on the island he calls home. When you take him down, Blaine presents you with TM38, Fire Blast, a powerful fire-type move befitting this Molten Master. Next is Koga. This Master Ninja and user of Poison-type Pokémon maintains a gym in Fuchsia City that is also a training school for the art of ninjutsu. Although he has spent some time dedicated to the study of medicine and antidotes, that knowledge is used offensively, as evidenced by a strong appreciation for status effect causing moves in battle. This makes him a natural match for his preferred poison type, and he delights in the despair and horror that poison type Pokemon and their moves can inflict on others. He gives you TM06 Toxic when you win, giving you an opportunity to taste the despair he relishes in. Regardless of his off-color taste in battle, Koga is known to patrol the grounds of the Safari Zone, 
keeping the wilderness park safe for everyone who wishes to travel within its bounds. With the gray area complete, we now move towards crueler and more dastardly trainers, starting with the bad and moving into the evil. Lieutenant Surge is the brash and arrogant ex-military gym leader of Vermilion City. This electric-type trainer has been hardened by his wartime service, and it's reflected in his interactions with challengers. During his time in the armed forces, Lieutenant Surge was known as a commanding officer whose caution was only outweighed by his strict standards. He was also a pilot known to use the electric-type Pokemon he brought to war with him to keep his plane in the air, saving his life at least once. He's paranoid, outfitting his gym with a series of puzzles and traps so only the gutsiest trainers ever make it to him directly. After beating him in battle, he gives you TM24 Thunderbolt. In the anime, Lieutenant Surge has much more time to show off his true colors. He's extremely arrogant and disrespectful, calling any trainer who hasn't bested him in combat a baby. He also tends to be brutal in battle, leaving the Pokémon of Challengers seriously injured after their attempts. He thinks unevolved Pokémon are worthless, and even goes so far as to make fun of Ash's Pikachu and refuse a battle against it, even though this short-sighted assumption directly leads to his defeat. It was inevitable that Agatha would end up low on our list. She's the oldest ever member of the Elite Four, and has the crotchety personality to go along with it. Although not openly hateful to the protagonist, this ghost-type member of the Elite Four has a very icy and aloof demeanor. She also has a deep-seated grudge against Professor Oak, her childhood rival. She considers him a weakling, and beneath her, for pursuing Pokémon research instead of continuing to hone his battle skills. She refers to Oak using derogatory terms like Old Duff, Coot, and even goes so far as to call him a shadow of his former self. She has a short temper and prefers to use Pokémon with horrifying appearances to keep her opponents on edge. In the anime, Agatha is displayed to have a much less severe personality, although her watching over the gym owned by the leader of Team Rocket certainly may raise some eyebrows. Taking home the silver is Blue Oak. Blue is the grandson of Professor Oak. Blue couldn't be more different from his kind and loving grandfather, the main character's childhood neighbor and all-around bully. The champion of the Kanto League doesn't have much redeeming about his personality. His primary motivation is seeking the power and fame that comes with being a Pokémon champion. Blue is known to bid people farewell with the snarky, smell you later. He also repeatedly challenges the protagonist to battles, oftentimes in situations where he's aware that the protagonist is at a distinct disadvantage or hasn't had an opportunity to heal their Pokémon. In spite of his flaws, Blue does go on to become the league champion before the protagonist, but is defeated by the player before Oak can even complete his trip to congratulate him. Professor Oak condemns Blue, saying that his lack of trust and understanding with this Pokémon team is why he was so easily unseated. In the anime, Blue is known as Gary and retains much of his negative character traits. In addition, he's unscrupulous, willing to cheat to get ahead in his journey, as well as being a womanizer, often surrounding himself with throngs of adoring fans. He does eventually mellow out and follow in his grandfather's footsteps, but his grating attitude and constant rudeness earns him this low spot on the list. Giovanni, the leader of Team Rocket and Viridian City's ground-type gym leader, takes home the gold medal. This brutal and conniving individual has very little value for Pokémon as living things, instead seeing them as tools to generate profit from. He has little respect for the bond between a trainer and their Pokémon, taking great delight in stealing Pokémon from the trainers they love and misusing their skills for his criminal activities. Throughout the player's journey, they stumble across and stop several Team Rocket plots, eventually culminating in the hostile Rocket takeover of the Silphco in Saffron City. Fighting their way through the hordes of Team Rocket grunts, the protagonist eventually finds themselves face to face with the boss, Giovanni. When you take down Giovanni, he retreats to a secret base to nurse his wounded pride. In a major plot twist, that secret base ends up being the Viridian City Gem. When you beat him again, Giovanni disbands Team Rocket, leaves you with TM27 Fissure, and disappears to start planning his next dastardly plot. In the anime, Giovanni plays a much bigger role, with ties to organized crime in every region in the Pokémon world. He's also a cruel and careless trainer, leaving his gym Pokémon in cramped cages when not in use. He also was instrumental in the Mewtwo cloning project, treating the incredibly intelligent psychic Pokémon as a slave, and ultimately, 
causing it to destroy his base, escape, and become a nuisance for Ash Ketchum and his friends. But what do you guys think? What gym leaders have the kindest intentions and goals? And which are the most cruel, aggressive, or downright mean? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite video games. But most importantly, stay wicked.